Good afternoon and welcome to WMCA Quarantine Edition. I'm Caroline Bear. And I'm Lacey Chatelier. Hey Caroline, this time has really made me think about everyone that I'm thankful for. Yeah, I'm especially thankful for Ms. Simno and everything she's doing for us, and so are many others. Here's how the Mount Carmel community is saying thank you to Ms. Simno. Hi, Ms. Simno. We wanted to tell you thank you so much for your effort in making it such an easy and comfortable and relaxing time during such a hard time. Hey, Ms. Simno, we just want to express our gratitude towards you, thanking you for everything that you've done throughout this entire time. During this time of uncertainty, you have tried your hardest to minimize our stress. By canceling exams, that was certainly accomplished. And right now, we know that this is probably really stressful having to make such tough decisions for our school community. But thank you for trying to make this experience very fair and less stressful and just for being very understanding of what all of us students along with teachers and faculty are going through right now. It's been stress free, free having a reminder that you're here for us and knowing that this time is only gonna make us stronger. It's really been helpful, so thank you. You remind the seniors how much they will be missed by placing a yard sign in all their yards. Thank you for all you do. It is very much appreciated. We miss you, be careful, and we love you. It's such a blessing to be able to sit home with our family and spend time with them and being able to learn at our own pace and take things at ease, all because of your effort and all the time you put in to make such important decisions for us. With the daily Jesus callings and everything, the announcements, the text messages, you've just been here for us, so it makes the adjustments so much easier. We really love you, Miss Simno, and we thank you for everything you've done for us. We're praying for you. We thank you so much for all your help. We love you. We love you, Miss Simno. Paul, yeah. With all this extra time on our hands, I've been catching up on my favorite childhood TV shows and really thinking about the lessons that they taught us. Yeah, they really should have taught some people how to park. Speaking of, here's MCA students with Ned's Declassified Parking Guide to show you the basics. In a high school full of teenage girls, tight parking, and good school lunches. It's me, Catherine. It's me, Maggie. <laughs> it's me, Allie. It's me, Ashley. Oh, it's me, Chloe. Follow us as we try to do the impossible help create a guide to help you survive high school. Parking at School Edition. If you drive to school, for the love of all things, please, 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 pull, pull up. up. Illegal, you can't do that. If you're parking near a corner, you always want to park in front of the sign. When parking at school, you should be at least 10 feet from the stop sign so that people dropping down the street can actually see the stop sign. You're supposed to park three feet away from the driveway. This stick is about three feet long. That's too close. You can't do that. When parking, you have to park 15 feet away from a fire hydrant. That's, That's definitely, definitely not 15 feet. That's all we have for this week. Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. Your results may vary. All club elections begin April 22nd and will continue until May 8th. Please check your club's Canvas page or however your moderators can communicate with the club for election instructions. If none are posted now, please do not worry. It is coming. If you are interested in running for an office for any club at MCA, please email the club moderators and let them know. This is an exciting time for us who will be the leaders of the 2020 through 2020 school year. Who knows, it is up to you. So please do not miss this opportunity to vote. Hey Caroline, what's wrong? I just miss my MCA family so much right now. I know, but even with so much darkness right now, here's how a group of scientists have been shedding light on a potential vaccine. Jennifer Haller from Seattle, Washington was the first person to be injected with the trial vaccine for coronavirus. 
She enrolled in this program because she saw how many people are suffering and she wanted to help make a difference during these uncertain times. Everybody is feeling so hopeless right now, she said, and I realized that there was something that I could do to help and I'm excited to be here. Her willingness to make an impact is just the start of advancements to be made on this coronavirus. Lacey, have you been social distancing? Yeah, but hey, hey, I need my space. Okay, speaking of space, social distancing doesn't mean that you have to stop helping the community. Here are people and organizations who are making a difference while keeping the distance. Drew Brees and his wife are donating $5 million for the state of Louisiana. This money will provide food for children and families in need, healthcare workers, and senior citizens. dollars is significant but man we're going to make sure that every dollar is so well spent and spent in a way where it's going to maximize the impact um, and try to sustain as long as we possibly can to get through however long this may take. During a time of disparity it can be hard to see the good. Essential business owners and medical staff all over are trying to guard themselves from the raging coronavirus by wearing masks from the start to finish of their shift. 13-year-old boy scout Quinn Callender responded to a request from a local hospital by designing and 3D printing ear guards to relieve pressure off the ears of the mask workers. Callender has since posted the file for free download and encourages all who have access to a 3D printer to print and distribute them to those who are sacrificing so much for our health and safety. Caroline, those people are so inspiring. You can make a difference too, Lacey. Here are some ways to get involved. With all of the sad coronavirus news going on right now, I thought it would be important to focus on the bright side, right here in St. Catherine of Siena Parish. If you visit their website, you will see an entire COVID-19 tab, including I want to help, I need help, and online giving. Most specifically, in an effort to aid local restaurants, they will be hosting one restaurant a day in their parking lot. Restaurants include Central City Barbecue, Blue Line Sandwich Company, and Porter and Lakes. All proceeds go to the restaurants. Deforestation has taken over the environment by a storm. Forests have lost over 7,505,264 trees just in 2020. To combat deforestation, One Tree Planted is making a change. It is a nonprofit organization that plants one tree for every $1 donated to the cause. Trees clean our air, contain cures to diseases, and inhabit wildlife. One Tree Planted has planted trees in North America, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Australia. To be part of the change, go to OneTreePlanted.org. One organization providing relief to homeless women and families is Hotel Hope. Located in New Orleans, this repurposed motel is where impoverished women and children seek refuge. This hotel provides visitors a place to stay for 90 days, only under the condition that said visitor is actively searching for a job and drug free. Volunteers, public funding, and donations keep this motel up and running. With just one donation or volunteer shift, you can be the difference for any struggling family. Hey Lacey, remember when we made a bunch of TikToks over Zoom? OMG, yeah, I remember that. I'm not mad. You mad! Wow, that was so fun. But I wonder how everyone else's experiences are with Zoom. That reminds me. Hey, Lacey. Hey, Caroline. I've got a question. Of the, of the week. week. My 18th birthday was in quarantine, and my friends decided to surprise me by parading and honking their horns outside of my house. 
So for a few days, we were hearing noises coming out of our fireplace, and we just thought it was like the wind and stuff. So um, this morning, we opened up the fireplace, and a bird flew in, and I was woken up to screaming because my mom is afraid of birds. We figured out what was in the, in the fireplace. <laughs> so the craziest thing that happened to me during quarantine was that my mom, my dad, and my sister all got corona. Um, my mom got it from New York when she was in New York, and then she came back, gave it to my dad, um, and then my dad gave it to my sister. But what they did was they moved me into an empty uh, house by myself. So my grandpa had a rental house that no one was currently renting or no one was in right now. And they moved me into there with um, like my clothes, some food, an air mattress, and a duffel bag. And I lived there for about like six days, and now I'm at home because um, they're all getting better. But yeah, I lived there for about six days by myself, and it was super scary. Well, that's all we have for this week. We'll see you same time, different place next week. But remember... Go out Go and out make, the, make the news because the news <laughs> is you. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for this week. Oh, <laughs> wait, give me a second. Go, Go out, out and make the news because oh no, you feel like it's you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Go out and Go make, out the, make the news. You didn't even start talking. No, that time we in sync. No, we were not. On my computer, yes, you were literally I'm a you, we were behind. Insane. You. We have to do it again. I messed up. We're not in sync. Yes, Caroline, I'm telling you, we're we were. We're gonna look at the report. Please edit now, me out of that. Now we can make the sick call. Miss you, and we missed WMCA, and thanks for letting us anchor. It's been fun. Yes, thank you.